So I want to talk a little bit about some old vintage Hardy reels here. So what I have are uh, three Hardy Perfects. This is a three and a half, three and three quarters, and a four inch. Um, <clears throat> which you'll notice about these two, the, the finish on them is all a little bit different. Um, while they're all pre-war, which is pre-World War II leaded reels, this reel has a lot more leading left on it than this reel, which has more leading left on than this reel. You also see difference too on here where you have line guards. Uh, the three and a half has a line guard, the four inch has a line guard, but the three and three quarters does not. Also in this position, you can kind of start to see too that um, the feet are a little bit different. Um, this reel uh, being a little bit newer has an actual ribbed brass foot while these three, two other reels have uh, smooth brass feet. So kind of walk through the differences. Um, each one will start with the smaller one first. Um, so this is a, a three and a half inch, um, which is the diameter of the reel, um, full length ribbed brass foot. And you can see that there's the retention screw that's on the back. Um, this is an opposite turn screw. So to actually to unwind it, you have to turn it in the opposite direction. Um, the set screw comes out like that. And then once the set screws out, you actually can then back off the reel the opposite way that you line. And it exposes the internals. Um, this one being a duplicated Mark II check system, you'll see that uh, both sets by duplicated Mark II, um, there's some confusion that means that there's two sets of uh, hardware in there. Actually, it means that there's, um, it's the second version, so the Mark II of the duplicated check system. So what duplicated means that this paw and this paw and this um, uh, spring and that spring are universal across the lines of reels, that they've kind of set up some standards um, saying that, hey, these are what they are and that what they're gonna be. Um, this is a right-hand wind reel. Um, you'll notice that whenever um, the way the paw is set up, that going this way there's less tension than whenever the paw goes this way right now i have the spring down pretty hard you can back that off and that'll be less tension on that spring so whenever it comes back this way which is the outgoing there'll be a little more pressure um, the spare you can see is non-engageable um, bearings inside you'll see this set um, for the line guard um, but this is a uh, pretty clean example of a pre-war um, late 1930s, early 1940s, um, Hardy Perfect three and a half inch salmon. Um, so this was called the salmon because these are the heavier springs and paws than their normal trout reels. Um, and you can see putting back on this set screw here, um, you're going to wind it the opposite way and give a little tighten down. I just do them with my thumb right now. Um, usually I'll do it with a penny. Um, but nothing, not a power tool or anything like that. Um, I was mentioning that this is a pre-war um, leaded reel. You also see that the, uh, the name is written in the circles and there's also the size. Um, that's one thing that helps with dating is that whenever the size was put on, I think they stopped putting sizes on the reels, started putting sizes on the reels in like the late 20s. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, late 20s-ish, so 30s. So um, you can assume that the rib brass foot the circle writing sizes on there. This is going to be a um, 30s reel. Moving over next to the three and three quarters, um, you can see that this one does not have a size written on it. It just has the uh, the circle writing on there. Um, also, too, you'll start to see that the brass foot's on there, and being it's a little bit older, the actual um, regulator, the tension knobs are different. This is more of a hard lines. Um, you can see like the vertical lines kind of come up and, and meet the, uh, the flat top. It's kind of a harder line. This one, I've seen people call it like a rope tensioner screw, um, but it's actually kind of a little bit of, a, of an angled, a um, little bit different um, part of a screw there. Um, same way that the other one came apart, there's a retention screw that you have to back off the opposite way. Uh, I don't have a pen on or a penny on me. Um, you can also just take a fishing hook, and put that in there, and break the break the go at it, and start to back off that screw. And as that screw comes out, 
you can also then start to reverse wind. And you're coming off. So again, you can see a very similar system. Um, this is the duplicated Mark II check as well. Um, this is very similar to what we saw on that three and a half. Uh, the spare does not engage. Same type of pause structure, same type of check mechanism, um, bearing race. Uh, very similar, similar reels. Um, it just, this one's a little bit older that doesn't have the date written on it. And then you can also start to see too that the tensioner knob is different. Um, foot has gone to a flat brass. And also on the back, um, you'll start to see that there's some difference in how they did the circles uh, around here. So this is also, this is not a reverse. This is a regular on. And so this was before they did the reverse set screw. So it goes righty tighty, tighten it all the way down. Again, right hand winds, um, three and three quarters. This is a four inch, very similar to the three and three quarters, has that kind of rope tensioner, flat brass foot, uh, no size on there. You can see the, uh, the wear is, is much more on this reel. Uh, it doesn't have all the leading uh, of the three and a half or even the leading of the three and three quarters. Um, big heavy reel, um, big line guard on it. So we'll take a look at the inside on this one. Oh. Again, it won't come off unless you back off the set screw. Gotta get my fishing hook in there. Ow. Uh, hold on, let me get a uh, let me get a penny real quick. All right, so I've got a coin here, and uh, it's really the easiest way to back off these screws. Chaining screws out, and it's the same way to back off the check. You can hear this this uh, this click is a little different. Show you why in a second. You start to see that the hardware is a little bit different in here um, versus the other ones. These are actually the hanging paws where instead of the open gap in the side that there's um, to get these ones out, you actually turn it sideways and it comes out through that piece there. Um, <clears throat> a little bit louder, a little bit of different sound um, check mechanism. Uh, again, duplicated Mark II. Um, same kind of rope style tensioner we saw on the three and three quarters, flat brass foot. Um, yeah, pretty much the same, but this is another. Um, one thing about these perfects, they're three piece reels. So you've got your winding plate, got your spool, got your cage. Um, pretty, pretty unique to the, the perfect style of reel. And as you go to close these up, um, One thing that is also different about these reels too is that you'll start to see a lot of them where the foot has been filed for modern reel seats. Um, so what happens is that guys get these reels, and sorry, I'm a little trouble there. Um, guys will get these reels and they'll start to want to put them on a modern rod. And um, some of the older salmon rods, they had kind of like a um, uh, slide cork rings so they could fit any type size real seat, um, sorry, real foot. Uh, with modern ways that they've kind of come to like the standardized by the, I don't know if it was AFTA, whoever decided the standards of line weights and real sizes and all those things, they've kind of standardized them so there's no longer like a proprietary foot to fit a, a real seat and, and all those things. So um, these actually become kind of hard to find rods to fish these on if you're going to fish them. Um, I use a guy out in Oregon, Steve Godshaw, who will refit a rod, um, put a new real seat longer, wider, it'll, it'll take these, but you can start to see that these are pretty big reels. Um, originally, traditionally made for salmon. They've kind of been adapted by steelhead and salmon fishermen now. And you can start to see that um, they've gained a lot of po popularity in the uh, two-handed spay guys. Um, before I even started, there's, I mean, they've always been popular. Uh, they just get a little more hard to find. And I um, wanted to make a video just to kind of show what three of them were and kind of some differences on them. I'm sure I have made some mistakes that people will want to correct me on. If you have any feedback or any questions or any updates that I'm not an expert, these are just, I collect them 
uh, for fun. If you see anything that I might have missed or have any questions or have any feedback of something that I said wrong, please let me know in the comments. Thanks.